Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, look at the person next to you and tell that person, I'm happy to see you alive. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. How many are happy to be alive? This season I saw um, people that you cannot expect to die. But to Hallelujah. Amen. That's where you discover it's not about how much you have. It's about the God you have. Hallelujah. Amen. Help me to pay pens for quiet. Let us pay pens for Jesus Christ. You are blessed that I interpret you. Yes, uh, I just welcome you all in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, welcome, Ibe Ons. I will not spend much time. I have just a few messages, a few words to give to you. And uh, I believe that it will change your life. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that someone is going to be transformed today. 
If you're that person, shout, I am here. Hey, 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 We want to go to the book of Mark chapter 1. Uh, we we'll just read few verses there. And I believe God will help us. Are you there? If you are there shout I am there. Mark chapter 6. From this one to six, that's what we are going to read today. Marega Kaulo Avosilela. Chapter six. Chapter one, from this one to six. Oh, Kaulo Yapili, Timana Yapilo Yaka Avosilela. The beginning of the gospel hey. of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Please mark that verse number one. I want you to know that there's nothing that is written in the scripture that is not important. Let's go. It says, as it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and, the, and they of Jerusalem. And they were all baptized of him in the river Jordan, confessing their sin. And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and eat honey. Yo. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. For what we are going to talk about today. It's very simple. Uh, we all know that the gospel is the good news, isn't it? So if I look at verse 1 It says in, It said the beginning Of the good news Of Jesus Christ The son of God So I want to speak about the good news The beginning of your good news Hallelujah Amen. I welcome everyone Because it's a new month today it's the, it's the good news that we can say today. We are saying good month, good month, a good new month to you. It's good news. And it's a good news. To wake up is good news. My father was a teacher. And I, I respected, I respected teachers even up to now. There is one thing which I discovered about teachers. Teachers will not go outside and advertise where their school is. Am I talking to you? You are the one who looks for the teacher. You are the one who goes to where the teacher is. I am a teacher. Teachers are there to shape our lives. There are things that I discovered when I look at teachers. As ordinary as they can be, engineers pass through their hands. Doctors pass through their hands. I don't know which profession you can call its name. Those people did not become professionals without teachers. So in other words, in the beginning of the good news of a graduate, a teacher was there. So in the foundation of many people, 
teachers were involved. They are not the engineers themselves. But they allow engineers to pass through their hands. They are in a critical position where you really need them. Am I talking to somebody? Some they are not even electricians. But they can teach electricians. They can lecture them. They become someone in life because they are there. If you remove them from the picture, some will not reach their full potential. It is very important. We might take them for granted. But please, I want you to know that everything that happens in your life happens for a reason. There is a certain uncle that you don't want in your life. But please, look for two or three things that that person taught you. They were there in your life for a reason. Somebody will come and say, I hate my mother. You are crazy uh, and you are mad. For you to know how to speak, for you to know how to walk, that stupid mother you call stupid mother was there for you. Am I talking to you? Most of the things that you become now, there was a teacher in the beginning. Somebody taught you how to walk. Tell the person next to you, somebody taught you how to do insults. <laughs> Tell the person next to you, we all want good news. We all want good news. But there is something that we do first. Before good news comes to us. Yes. You cannot just get good news. Sitting at home. Doing nothing. And you expect good news. No it cannot just come. There is something that happens. Before good news arrives. Some can pray. So that good news can come to them. They will tell you a testimony. When I prayed, God answered my prayers. Now they are able to share the good news that they are carrying. Someone will tell you that I was fasting. After my prayer and fasting, my good news came to my direction. Someone will tell you when I connected to this person, my life changed. Just because you need to connect sometimes with certain individuals who can make your life to change. God knows the place where these people are found. And God knows these people that are supposed to come in your life. Without them, forget about good news. Some people, they did not enter into your life by mistake. When they enter into your life, ask yourself, why are they in my life? Where are they taking me? Because if you don't identify that, and if you cannot identify it, your good news cannot come to your direction. God can release angels in the form of a human being. Hey, people, hear this. You have mixed with many angels and you did not receive them. That's why you are not experiencing good news. Am I talking to you? Uh, I, I was reading the word. I saw the father of Samson. I saw the mother of Samson. The first one to encounter an angel with good news was the mother of Samson. The mother of Samson said to the father, I have met someone. This person told me something. This person gave me some instruction. I want you to meet this man. They 
the father went again and met this man and they did not understand that it was an angel of the Lord am I talking to you the angel of the Lord was hiding itself so that it cannot be identified they said we cannot allow you to go wait for a while we want to cook for you he said I don't eat what you are eating what made them to identify that it was an angel was when they put a sacrifice on the fire, on the altar something happened there some people will never manifest their glory into your life before you do something your good news might not come to you you know yourself tell the person next to you you know yourself if they give you food you gossip like no one's business even if you didn't know anything you just say yeah you know what I have a story no way. God is saying something today in the book of Jeremiah he said that before I formed you in the womb if I read that scripture, I always laugh. Because God is saying, before I, he's talking to Jeremiah, he, before you even came here to, the, to this world, I knew you. Before you even entered into your mother's womb, I knew you. Now, the question is, God did not, why, did not, why didn't he mention that I knew your mother before you were born? it was none of his business what his business was was what was going into the womb who was going into the womb who was carrying the child is not the story here I knew you Jeremiah I understood you very well I even gave you a name am I talking to somebody here Listen to me. My man. Everything that happens in your life. It started somewhere. What you are seeing now. So, so it was there before you entered into your mother's womb. So, so Who you are now. So, so what you are doing now. So, so was was settled already by God. So if you are passing through challenges now, God took care of those challenges before you came here on earth. Because before you were formed in your mother's womb, he knew you. He understood where you were going. He set you apart. He appointed you. Am I talking to somebody? Uh -huh. So listen to me. My man. I want you to understand that good news has got a formula. You, you cannot just receive good news before you do something. There are things that you do. There are things that must be done first before good news comes. Number one, if you expect good to come to you, do good to others. When I looked into this text, he said in the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's a document here that is telling us that before the beginning of this good news, something was there. Something happened. There were things that took place for you to see this person working today. This person was not born working. But something happened. Please, I want you to hear this. Where you are now is not the beginning. Am I talking to you? you the beginning was there before. What you are seeing now is a product of what started. You will understand it very well. The life of Christ was documented. The prophets, like Prophet Isaiah, they, they wrote about him. His life was like in, in the prophetic words, it was written. 
Isn't but for it to be fulfilled there was a voice of the one who was crying in the wilderness listen, listen to me I want you to know this can you come can you come can you stand look in this direction right listen to this he is coming he is not yet in the world so before he comes God is automatically doing something in your life before you came God sent some people ahead of you please hear this if you don't identify this person you will never receive good news in your life this person might be a pastor might be an evangelist might be a teacher but this person goes ahead of you this person must be there ahead of you am I talking to you before you come you all know that as women you do preparation before a child comes Isn't it? you prepare so our God cannot be outshined by us. Our God is too great. His plans are way better than our plans. He cannot put you into this world without someone that he has sent ahead of you. No, he cannot do that. Remember, for Jesus to come, somebody was sent ahead of him. People hear this. This is the beginning of the gospel. This is the beginning of the good news of your life. Knowing who was sent ahead of you. If you don't understand it, your life will be a problem. Some people call them mentors. Some people they call them leaders. Some people they call them whatever you can call, but they are ahead of you. Ask the person next to you, who are you looking up to? Ask the person, who are you looking up to? If you cannot identify that voice, you will not reach your destiny. Listen, if you cannot identify that voice, you will never enjoy good news. For him to get a job, somebody, for him to get a, to get a wife, somebody, yeah. Yeah. Ah. am I talking to you? Amen. For him to get a car, somebody listen there is nothing that happens in your life never without God sending someone in front of you someone has to go ahead of you someone has to listen to me for Joseph to make it in life he was supposed to be the youngest amongst his brothers so that his brothers would come first so that when he come they've already prepared hatred for him to direct him to his palace so your haters are ahead of you <laughs> Those who don't like you, they are always ahead of you. They have to go ahead so that when you are coming, your way has been made. They now know his name because of him. He is gossiping about him. They have never met him, but just because he has gone ahead, a voice that is crying there is a voice that is crying a voice of the one that is crying in the wilderness it cannot be found in a palace but it is found in a wilderness am I talking to you it's not in the palace it's in the wilderness so you can't find that voice somewhere close to where you think it is found why do people hate me? No, they are ahead of you. You can never be a better person without them going ahead of you. They have to, they have to be ahead of you. Look at the person next to you and say, How many are ahead of you? Ask, How many are ahead of you? 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Every one of us, we always want to hear good news. But let me tell you something. Before your good news comes, the reason why you call it a testimony is because before your good news comes, you have to experience what they call bad news. Something must hate you. Something must disturb you. So that when your good news comes, you remember what you have passed through. To say, hey, I've passed through a lot. Now you have got a testimony. Now you now know where you are coming from. The danger is when you forget where you are coming from. Look at the person next to you and say, you must remember where God has taken you from. No one fell from heaven. No matter how good you can be, you did not just fall from the sky. For you to be who you are, for you to be what you are, somebody went ahead of you. There are people who know things that you don't know. If you understand that, your life will be better. I'm talking about God here. He is coming here to earth. But before he lands here on earth, before he came here on earth, he looked for a womb. Which womb must I go to? Hallelujah. So Mary was prepared before he came. Mary was supposed to be there. Mariana Sanason Abete. Hallelujah. Amen. So everything happens according to order. Dinto di if Mary was not there John's assignment was not going to be there so the life of Mary was supposed to be there so that she can accommodate Jesus the beginning of the gospel without Mary we were not going to be talking about the beginning of the gospel without prophet Isaiah speaking about him we were not going to talk about Mary but there is John there is this man this man was not doing what Jesus was supposed to be doing the people that are put ahead of you they are not doing what you are supposed to be doing. They are not even in your field. John, John came here baptizing people. Telling them to repent. That was his assignment. He was here to make the way of the Lord straight. But Jesus was supposed to meet him. He was supposed to pass through his hands. I, I, I might not look like the one that you are looking for. But if I am a John in your life, I might not be dressed the way you want me to be dressed. I might not eat what you want me to eat. Because John was eating locusts and the honey and he was dressed in a camel skin if it was Jesus he would say God why didn't you give me a better person to, to hey. baptize me ma, 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 the person that is that supposed to lift you up to your next level yes. might not look to look like the way you want them am I talking to you uh -huh. you might undermine John but without John there was not going to be the gospel John was supposed to be there <laughs> there are people that you undermine there are people that you look down upon listen you don't know your tomorrow maybe that person was placed in your life by God just like John then you say, ah, this person who stays in the wilderness, 
This person who doesn't even dress well. This person that does not even know how to how to, uh, what this what is this? Okay. I see no mix at Kai. Hallelujah. Amen. So before the arrival of Christ, Billy Morgan has just so afitla. John was there. So had no nalite. And John's mission was to prepare his way to make sure that when he comes there is a bit of order. You are worried about your job. You are worried about where can I get a job? Who, who, how, can I get, how can I get my promotion? I identify who was sent in front of you. There is somebody that God has placed in front of you. And that person might not be doing what you are doing. But that person must be in your path. There must be in your direction so that your life will change. Look at the person next to you and say, your life has to change. Your life has to change. So number one thing that you need to understand the voice was crying way, number one, in the wilderness. It shows you that you need to check where is my voice coming from. It doesn't mean that if you, if you suffered with somebody together at primary school, secondary school, you are going to be with that person for the rest of your life. So number one, the voice was coming from the wilderness. Number two, that voice was not there to destroy, but the voice was there to prepare a way. So number two, to prepare a way. Are you aware you are meant to have an assignment? You have an assignment. As you are seated there, you have an assignment. You were sent by God to do something in someone's life. When that assignment is finished, you are done with the person. Don't hold on. Listen, John the Baptist. Don't hold on to some people. After you baptize them, let them go. Am I talking to you? John was having an assignment. The assignment of John was to prepare the way. Am I talking to you? To make the path of Jesus straight. That was the assignment. Number three, John was baptizing. Listen to me. John was not the savior. John was baptizing in the wilderness. People were not going to him when he was in town. People were going to him when he was in the wilderness. The place where John was was not a place where people can say we are going to relax. No. The place was not good. But there was life. The places where your life is might not look like it. People were coming all over to be baptized by John. His assignment was great. Am I talking to you? Baptizing them. Never despise what you are doing. Whatever you are doing, do it at your maximum best. Don't worry about what people are saying because I'm sure many people were talking about John. To say, what, are you, what, what, what are you seeing? This man who looks like this, those who despised him, they were not baptized. But those who accepted John, they were baptized by him. People were coming from other towns which were out of that town to be baptized by John. Hallelujah. 
Am I talking to you? Now listen. The one that is in your path, that's like the way they were standing here. This person who was in front will never look for the one behind. Understand your level in life. Where are you in your life? Spiritually and physically, where are you? Because there is no way someone who is at the top will come to look for you there. You are the one to look for who is there so that I can also go there. Are you talking to somebody? Look at the person next to you and say, you need to look up. Because those who are up, tell that person, those who are up are also looking up. <laughs> So if you cannot encounter the person who is on the next level that you want to go, you can never experience your good news. You, you will block your good news. Understand these people of God. John was not looking for Jesus. Jesus is the one who looked for John. He was talking about him, yes. He was preparing the way for him, yes. But it was not his assignment.
You all want to see your hands open. Isn't it? It's just an encounter. One encounter with John that he had his heavens automatically opened. If you meet the right person at the right time, your doors have to open. There are some things that starts to work in your life. When you meet the right person, you don't lose value, but you add value. But if you meet the wrong person, you are going to lose value. You will not even look like you. <laughs> Am I talking to you? Amen. But there are some times when you meet the right person, you discover that your life will change. Your joy will even change. There are things that change around you. Your heavens will open. After the heavens will open, the Bible says that he was filled with the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God was upon him. People of God, sometimes the Spirit of God is not coming on you because of your association. The people that you are meeting, instead of them opening your heavens, they are closing your heavens. There are some people who come into your life when you are experiencing an open heaven. The moment when you discover that my heaven is closed, please run away. Some are there to lock your heaven. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. There are people who can lock your heaven. Go and ask Daniel. Daniel was praying. While he was praying, an angel was released. And there was something that blocked that angel. The prince of Persia. If you read Daniel chapter 10. Am I talking to you? Amen. Tell the person next to you, don't move around with heaven blockers. Am I talking to somebody? When he encountered John, one encounter with John, heavens opened. Am I talking to you? One encounter. You don't need many things. You, this time, Jesus was not even praying and fasting. But when he had an encounter, there are some people when they come close to you, when you walk with them, without even prayer, just by walking with them, just by talking with them, your heavens automatically open. You will get peace that you were not having before. You can now sleep like you never did before. There is joy in your spirit just by an encounter. His encounter with John made the heavens to open and made him to be filled by the spirit. And he heard a voice. We all want to hear a voice speaking. Do you see when your good news comes, it does not just come because you are only praying and fasting. It matters as who you meet in life. Some people when you meet them that's why sometimes I always worry myself. I always ask myself I really need to ask some people questions. If your things were now working why did you disconnect? If you saw that there was a blessing coming to your direction why did you disconnect? I always have this question. Because where you see yourself benefiting, connect. Tell the person next to you, people always want to learn the hard way. Tell the person, people always want to learn the hard way. Hallelujah. Amen. He did not stop from there. When his heavens were opened, when he was filled with the Spirit, listen to me. Why was it that John was there to create this platform? That's, that's where my story is going. Someone who is sent for you is gathering the glory for you. Jesus' ministry did not start anywhere else. He started at John's church. Because imagine you are being baptized. Heavens open. Other people are watching. There were too many people at, the, at that pool, at, at that river, Jordan. There were many people. They heard a voice. They also heard it. They saw, a, they saw this spirit coming upon him. Do you think they were going to stay with John? A, a, a collection of people followed Jesus. Even the disciples of Jesus followed him. 
If I talk it to you, what am I saying? Somebody who is ahead of you is holding your divine helpers. Someone who is ahead of you is holding your breakthroughs. If you meet that person, your blessings will start to flow on your life. Things will start to work. I was not having this before. Now I'm having it. I was blind. But now I can see. I was always broke. But now I've got money in my pocket. I was walking before. But now I am driving. I was renting before. But now I own a house. You just need that connection. I see your life changing. I see your life changing. Amen. I say I see your life changing. Amen. If you are that person, shout, I am here. I am here. If you are that person, shout, I am here. I am here. If you are that person, shout, I am here. I am here. John was part of the good news of Christ. That's why when you read this scripture, verse 1, it says this is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Son of God. So, whatever you read after that is part of it. Am I talking to somebody now? Your life is only made perfect if you identify the right people. It must be your prayer. Lord, connect me connect me to the person who is in my next level. You need to connect yourself to the person that is in your next level. Otherwise, if there was no John, Jesus could have died doing carpentry. What delayed Jesus' ministry was his encounter with John. Otherwise, people would be asking, why did Jesus not start ministry. But he could not have started ministry without meeting John. So if he met John at 25, he would have started ministry at 25. But he did not meet John until a particular time. And that time when he met John, everything changed. His life changed. Those who used to know him as a carpenter, when he came out from John the Baptist church, he was no longer the carpenter. He was the son of God. Because that was the beginning of the gospel of Jesus. Christ. Before he was Jesus. But when he arrived at this baptism center, he was now Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at the person who says you need to locate the place where your uplifter is. The other person needs to locate. You need to locate the environment, environment where your lifting is. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Don't worry what is happening around you. Focus. Just focus on your next level. Just focus on where you are going. Just focus on who is waiting for you there. There are some people who have already made for you. No matter how many people hate you, there are some people who are speaking good for you. There are some people who are defending you. There are people who are even fighting for you. It doesn't mean that everyone hates you. No, there are some people who are speaking good about you. John was there to speak about him. John was there to prepare a way for him. I love John. He humbled himself. He lowered himself. Hallelujah. Amen. It doesn't matter what you have in your pocket. It can be useless if you don't meet the one who is supposed to take you to another level. It doesn't matter how gifted you are. It doesn't matter what is inside your life. What matters is who is going to take you to the other level. You need to identify that person that God has sent in your life to make the way straight for you. Not to make the way crooked, but to make the way straight for you. If you see that person, your life will change. Your heavens will open and your story will start to change. 
to. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell the person next to you, if you have come to GMI, if you have come to GMI, and your life has not changed, and your life has not changed, change church. Change church. Hallelujah. Amen. You must have something that to say, when I came here, my heavens opened. When I came here, I was filled by the Spirit. When I came here, that was the assignment of John. After that, Jesus was on his own. I am here to usher you to your open heavens. How to maintain it is up to you. I am here for you to hear the voice of God. How to maintain it is up to you. I am here for you to be filled with the spirit of God. How you maintain it is none of my business. You need to maintain it. You need to maintain what has been placed inside of you. It was not the responsibility of John. John baptized him. After the baptism, it was up to him. Jesus was going to the mountain to pray. Jesus was fasting. He was doing his things. John had finished his assignment. If I finish my assignment, it's now up to you. How can you grow this anointing? How can you grow what God has placed in your life? So it's not me, it's not up to me to come to you again and say, after baptism, what did you do? I must see the fruits. I must see what is happening. A report came to John. John, this Jesus, he's doing many things. Is he the one? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell the person next to you they are going to talk about you. After today, they are going to talk about you. Not in a bad way, but in a good way. Tell the person they are going to talk about you. Tell the person next to you they are going to talk about you. Listen, even your gossipers who went ahead of you, they have made people to know you before they even see you. You cannot destroy what God is building. If God says yes, no one can say no. If God opens a door for you, no one can close it. So even if they go ahead of you and speak negative about you, listen to me. They don't know what they are doing. They don't know what they are doing. What they meant for evil, God meant it for good. Sometimes they are ahead towards you is your promotion. Blessed are they when they persecute you. Blessed are, are they. Huh? Tell the person next to you, I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too blessed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. To be stressed. Can I tell you something before I close? When Jesus met John. That was the first time heaven spoke to him. Go and read your Bible. He went, he was talking to, up to the, he was using scripture during that time. <laughs> In the temple, when he was young, he was talking, but there was no day where heaven spoke to him. But after baptism, after he met John, after, you just need one encounter with the right person your marital destiny goes in line your business goes in line your finances will go in line Jesus did not come he did not appear there saying do you know who I am he did not boast himself of being God himself he humbled himself after humbling himself he was lifted up hallelujah Amen. your lifting up has come your Amen. good news Amen. has come Amen. I say your good news has started Amen. your good news has come in the name of Amen. Jesus shout a powerful Amen. Amen I want you to make a simple prayer Lord connect me to the right people connect me to the right people open your mouth and pray that prayer connect me Lord to the right people
Doing the right things yes, Lord. in the mighty yeah, name of Jesus. Let me only be concerned pray, pray, say, about pray, what you are concerned pray, about pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Teach us, Lord, to know your way. Teach us to identify those you have set ahead to be able to help us in whatever way, my Father. Helping us in our career, helping us in our spirit. Helping us, my father. In Jesus' name, Jesus. shout aloud, Amen. Amen. I have checked many times.